Delta 1009 at Delta 27, we are ready. 10. Delta 1009, Delta 27, your startup is approved, 1 to 1 decimal 8. This is the third video of Aerodrome and Aircraft Lighting System series. This time we are going to talk specifically about the airport runway lighting system. Runway is filled with a multitude of lights and they are essential for the safe operation of an aircraft. Firstly, there is the runway edge lights. Runway edge lights are placed on either side of the runway spaced approximately 200 feet apart, outlining the edges of the runway. These lights are usually placed on short metal poles to elevate them from any obstruction such as long grass or drifting snow. Then there is the runway threshold lights, which are similar to runway lights but are red and green split lenses. As the pilot approaches the runway to land, the threshold lights on the near end of the runway appears green, while those on the far end of the runway appear red. Runway light systems are normally operated from the control tower and are turned on during nighttime hours and during daylight whenever the visibility is less than 2 miles or at the pilot's request. Whenever the control tower is not in operation, the lights are either left on or are operated using pilot controlled lighting or PCL. PCL system permits pilot to switch on the lights by pressing their microphone switch a number of times in rapid succession, producing an audible click on the control tower frequency. The number of clicks controls both the operation and the intensity of the runway lighting system. Runway light systems are classified according to the brightness they are capable of producing into three types, low intensity runway lighting, medium intensity runway lighting, and high intensity runway lighting. Runways that are used extensively during periods of low visibility may be equipped with an assortment of embedded runway lights that provides the pilots additional visual cues when landing. These systems include touchdown zone lighting, runway center line lighting, and taxiway turn off lighting. During periods of very low visibility, the runway edge lighting does not provide the pilot with sufficient visual cues to properly land the aircraft. In the 1950s, when the ILS was initially being installed, various pilots group complained that landing in these conditions was like landing in a black hole. They reported that during the last few seconds of the approach, as they were raising the aircraft nose for landing, the runway edge lights were too far apart to provide an accurate altitude reference. In an attempt to provide additional visual cues during this critical phase of landing, a new supplement lightning system was developed known as touchdown zone lighting. Touchdown zone lights are embedded in the runway and extend from the landing threshold to a point 3000 feet down the runway. Touchdown zone lights use 100 to 200 watt bulbs and are placed in sets of three on both sides of the runway center line. Touchdown zone light intensities are stepped up in conjunction with the runway edge lights. In condition of reduced visibility, runway edge lights do not provide sufficient directional guidance information to enable pilots to accurately steer their aircraft along the center line of the runway. To assist the pilots, many airports have installed runway center line lights. Center line lights are similar to touchdown lights but are placed along the entire center line a 75 foot interval is between them. Runway center line lights are bi-directional in the first part of the runway. The lights are white, while at last 1000 feet of center line lights are red. In the 2000 feet preceding the red lights, the center line lights alternate red and white to warn pilots that the runway end is approaching. When visibility is reduced, Many pilots find it difficult to identify the intersecting taxiways for exiting the runway. Runway utilization rates are reduced as pilot taxi slowly, trying to find the proper turnoff. To reduce this taxi time, some airports have installed taxiway turnoff lights, which are similar to center line lights but are used to delineate the path that the pilot should use for exiting the runway. Taxiway turnoff lights are inset into the runway surface and are spaced at 50 foot intervals. These lights are colored green and extend from the runway center line to the proper intersecting taxiway. One of the most complex tasks that the pilot face occurs near the end of an instrument approach 
when they make the transition from instrument to visual flying. During this transition, they must locate the runway and properly maneuver the aircraft for landing within seconds. In conditions of low visibility, a pilot may be able to see only about 2,000 feet ahead of the aircraft. In today's modern jets, this distance can be covered in less than 20 seconds. If the runway is not in sight below the minimum descent altitude, they must go around. Within this short time, the pilot must locate the runway, determine the aircraft's position, make any necessary adjustment in flight attitude, and then land the aircraft. Without some form of visual assistance, this task is virtually impossible to perform safely in so short a time. These problems were noted as early as 1932 by officials from the airlines and the Bureau of Air Commerce. Experiments were conducted as early as 1935 in an attempt to simplify the transition from instrument to visual flight during an approach. The experiments led to the construction of Approach Lighting System Type 1 or ALSF-1, which became the standard for runways equipped with Category 1 ILS. When Category 2 and 3 ILS were being developed, it was realized that an improved approach lighting system was necessary. During Category 2 approaches, the pilot may be required to transition to visual reference during the last 15 seconds of flight. Category 3 approaches permit the pilot even less time to make this transition. In response, the FAA developed an improved approach lighting system known as Approach Lighting System Type 2 or ALSF-2. ALSF-2 is similar to ALSF-1 but includes additional lighting system. A supplemental set of white light bars is located 500 feet from the runway threshold to provide the pilot with an additional distance indication. Red light bars are also placed on both sides of the center line providing pilots with aircraft roll guidance during the last 1,000 feet. Both the LSF-1 and the LSF-2 systems are expensive to install, operate and maintain. This expense can be justified only at airports that use this type of equipment routinely. At most airports, a smaller, less expensive system can provide pilots with the same benefits as these larger systems. Some runways are located such that the identification of the extended runway center line is difficult. If extensive instrument approaches are not being conducted to that runway, a full approach lighting system may be economically unfeasible. It is usually more practical to simply install the sequenced flashing lights and let them guide pilots to the runway end. When installed in this manner, sequence flashing lighting systems are usually spaced 200 feet apart and are known as alignment indicator lights or rails. At night, the pilots observing the visual flight rules may be deprived of the visual cues used to determine the proper glide path. Without these cues, the pilots may be unable to correctly orient their aircraft during the final approach phase and may misjudge their distance, glide angle or rate of descent. Any miscalculation of one of these factors and here you are incorrectly approaching the runway and colliding with an obstruction in the approach path or landing at an excessive speed and rolling off the end of the runway. After extensive evaluation at the National Aviation Facilities Experimental Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey in 1960, the FAA introduced the Visual Approach Slope Indicator or VASI system. WASI lights are designed to be installed on runways with or without ILS and can provide pilots with accurate glide path information as far as 20 miles from the runway. The WASI system uses either two or three light units arranged to provide the pilot with a visual glide path. These light units are next to the runway with the first located approximately 700 feet and the second approximately 1200 feet from the approach end. Each WASI unit provides a narrow beam of light filtered such that the upper portion above the glide path of the beam is white and the lower portion which is below the glide path is red. If a pilot sees a white over white light on the WASI, it means that he is above the glide slope and he needs to descend to intercept the proper glide slope. If he sees a red over red light, it means that he is below the glide slope and he needs to climb 
to capture the proper glide slope. If he sees a red over white light, it means that he is on the proper glide slope. The VASG system is highly effective but can be difficult to use since the pilot must constantly observe light units that are separated by up to 1000 feet. A similar system, the Precision Approach Path Indicator or PAPI, has been developed that remedies this situation. PAPI units are similar to VASI units but are installed in a single row. Each light unit emits a white and a red beam but at progressively higher angles. If the pilot is more than half a degree above the desired flight path, all the light units will appear to emit white light. But as the pilots descend to a lower angle, the system is designed so that the pilot will begin to see red lights emitted from the unit nearest to the runway. When half the lights are red and the other half are white, the pilot is on the desired glide path, which is usually 3 degrees. If the pilot descends below this glide path angle, additional light units will be observed as red. If all the light units appear red, the pilot is in excess of half a degree below the desired glide path and should begin to climb immediately. If you like the content of this video, consider subscribing. Remember that a good pilot or engineer or anybody in the aviation industry is always learning. Thanks for watching.